Have you ever been in a situation where your boyfriend or girlfriend said or did one small thing that killed your relationship stone dead? We had been going out for three and a half years. I thought I loved her. We planned the rest of our lives together. The following conversation made me realize I could never or would never be happy with her. I told her my grandmother was going in for a triple heart bypass. As such, I couldn't come visit her as was planned. That's not acceptable. I can't believe you would put your family above our relationship. I instantly went cold, as if a switch controlling my feelings had been flicked. Bad times. Happy now, though. I knew a girl who was dating this really cool guy. He was very laid back but successful, really nice, got along with her friends and family. One day they are hanging out at her place and they had a quick bite to eat. She broke up with him the next day because she told him that she felt like things were not going to move in a positive, mature direction. The real reason? She hated the way he ate an apple. She said it was like seeing a starving man eat for the first time in years. She said it was messy and disgusting. Years later, she admitted that she had made a huge mistake. After finding out I was pregnant, my then boyfriend and I mutually decided that an abortion was what we wanted. A few days before the procedure, we were playing around and he kicked me in the stomach. I became very upset and his response was, why are you mad? It's going to be dead in a few days anyway. I had the abortion and ended the relationship soon after. I was dating this guy in the first year of college. We had known each other through mutual friends for a while and had gotten together maybe two months before this happened. He wanted me to go to a bar with him and meet his friends and to put on these ridiculous red suspenders before we left the house. 19-year-old me didn't know what this could mean. I walked into a large gathering of skinheads. Apparently those ridiculous red suspenders were some sort of neo-Nazi pride thing. I have an extremely Jewish last name that my new boyfriend had failed to notice, although I don't practice a religion myself. After spending Christmas dinner at her family's house, exchanging gifts, and watching movies till the early morning hours, I ventured home and received a text message from her literally as soon as I walked in the door. I opened it and it was from her and it read, Cat, every time I'm with my name, I can't stop thinking about Greg. And every time I'm with Greg, I can't stop thinking about my name. Cat was the nickname of her best friend at the time and Greg was some other dude she worked with. Check the names of the people you're texting. It takes three seconds and it won't destroy someone's entire life for a while. In grade nine, I had my first boyfriend. We were together for about a month and his mom said she wanted to take us out for dinner. I said okay and got a little dressed up. We went to a fast food restaurant. She then told me over dinner that if I wanted condoms or weed, I could go to her because she's a cool mom. When I said it wouldn't be necessary, his dad laughed and nudged him saying, guess you're not getting laid, and then asked me why not. I noped out of there so fast. He has a kid now. My dad told me that once he was trying to cheer up his ex-girlfriend when she was down about something. He made the error of saying something along the lines of, it could be worse, you could be your brother, who died the previous year. Oopsie. I've been in a non-serious relationship with this guy for a couple of months now. I was starting to quite like him. However, the other night we got onto the subject of depression and mental illness. This is a subject that's quite close to my heart because not only have I suffered from depression and anxiety, but I also lost my mother to suicide because of her ongoing mental health problems. I hadn't told him this. Anyway, he proceeded to say that depression and mental health problems were a made up thing and that it was simply on trend to have them and something about people having to pull themselves together. I said that while there are people who do glorify the idea of mental illness and use it as an excuse, it can be very real. He basically sniggered at that. I then very calmly said, well, it's real to me. My mother committed suicide because of depression. I've seen firsthand the anguish it can cause. No one would choose it to be trendy. He then pretty much shrugged while having this weird sort of smile on his face. I tried to get to the bottom of what he meant, but it was completely pointless. He seemed to have no empathy and furthermore, no idea why I suddenly had gone a bit somber and then he started talking about football. And then the next morning he asked why I was being so annoying last night and told me I didn't treat him well. This man is 31. I have now gone off him somewhat. Girlfriend threw my cat out the window from the third floor because she thought cats had nine lives and it would be fine. My cat had three legs. After the fall, it had two left. 
Now my cat is on one of those back leg pet wheelchair things. Me and a girl I had been with for a few months were discussing how we would spend one million dollars, and I was saying how I would like to build a three-story, below-ground concrete bunker with a large plexiglass top floor ceiling at ground level for sunlight and food production, and a large separate enclosed concrete water reservoir, blah blah blah. I go on for a minute and she says, yeah, but that's impossible. I said, well, yeah, because I don't have one million dollars. And here it is. She replied, no, you couldn't live that deep underground. The heat from the center of the earth would burn you up. Mind you, we were talking about 24 to 30 feet underground. I was flabbergasted and broke it off the next morning. There is one thing I try not to think about with my boyfriend, because he's making an honest effort to be a better boyfriend. I try not to think about the fact that I was supportive of him while he was addicted to opiates, but then I relapsed into anorexia, depression, and anxiety, and he told me he couldn't be with a girl who didn't eat and wanted to kill herself. My most recent relationship ended with the words, well, you don't know stress, do you? I'm going to school for my career, not working in a restaurant. The context? I am 18, was kicked out of my parents' house less than a year ago, I am finishing high school self-supported with two jobs, one of which is busing, the other is retail. Neither are fun, but they pay bills. He goes to school four days a week and lives with his parents, supported by them. Those words stung and I couldn't see him the same way afterwards. I dated a girl for two years. She was pretty hot, but about a year and a half into it, she picked up a habit that made me want to dump her on the spot every time. I am American and I live in the South. However, my family is from the Northeast, which is where I began learning to speak, and I also grew up speaking two other languages, so my accent and inflections are a little… off. She loved to make fun of it when I couldn't hear her speak and say, what? She'd just respond with the weirdest caricature of my voice and scrunch up her face and go, what? It wasn't cute. It wasn't endearing. It was like she was trying to sound stupid. And then it just started spreading to everything she heard me say until it started getting in the way of conversation. God, that was so annoying. Brought a guy I was dating to see a minor league baseball game with me. I was meeting up with my best friend, her parents, and her coworker. This guy fails to tell me he ingested a couple of Xanax and several beers prior to me getting there, and then downs two more beers at the park on my tab. He also forgot his debit card. While completely drunk, he starts yelling at me that I better not put any stuff about us dating on Facebook. I'm not one to post all my business on Facebook, so I had no idea where this was coming from. He proceeded to remind me about this for 40 more minutes. He kept forgetting that he had said it already due to his state of inebriation and started ranting again every few minutes. He then jumped over a railing and dropped 12 feet onto a concrete platform to save time walking down the ramp to the men's room. He severely bruised both of his heels and can barely walk. This is the point where I took him home, handed him an ice pack and a bottle of aspirin and left. I got with the girl that I met at a wedding. She was the maid of honor, I was the best man. We ended up being together for three years. She had been abused when she was super little, but I overlooked it because I'm not a jerk. It's not like she could help it. Anyway, one night she woke me up at 3 a.m. and said, if we ever had a daughter and you wanted to, you know, touch her. I'd be okay with it. I immediately got out of bed, threw as many of my clothes as I could in a duffel bag, and drove away in my underwear. I was so mad I didn't have time to get dressed. I just wanted to get as far away from her as possible. I waited for her to go to work before I went back and got the rest of my stuff. She tried taking me to court for taking my stuff and it got tossed out because I'm a nerd that keeps receipts for electronics, but I totally dodged a bullet on that one. I was out to dinner with a girl I had been dating for around six months. I had a small issue with her excessive drinking, but besides that we had a great relationship. Anyways, when our waitress brought out our food and put it on the table, she knocked over a glass of water and it spilled onto my then girlfriend. She lost her mind. She berated the poor girl and screamed and yelled and caused a massive scene over a glass of spilled water. I was shocked. I've always been very easygoing. I'm very appreciative of servers because I know the kind of crap they deal with every day. At that moment, I began transitioning toward a breakup. We split up a couple of weeks later. A great saying I read once, if they're nice to you but rude to the waitress, they are not a nice person. We weren't dating yet, but I was really hitting it off with a guy from an online dating site and we'd been talking for just over a week. 
We were on the phone the night before the day we were supposed to finally meet up in person, and for some reason, can't remember what brought it up, he used the word tranny. I calmly and respectfully let him know that was a derogatory term and that I would prefer that he didn't call them that. He already knew I am a sexual educator. This got him really angry and started going on about how they're mentally ill and how they just need help and in no way should a person be allowed to live as a gender that is different from the one they assigned at birth. I tried to explain the issue to him, but he just wouldn't hear it. In his mind, these people are straight up sick and he would cross the street if he saw one coming towards him. I just couldn't ever be with someone who has views like that. I dated this one guy for a little bit. He called me up all excited that he got a new sound system for his car. I really couldn't care less, but I was glad for him and let him enthuse for a bit. He picked me up the next day, and when I went to sit down I noticed there was this huge speaker in the footwell of the passenger side of his car. He told me to sit on the seat with my legs crossed, and I did so. I asked him later where he was planning on putting the new speaker, and he gave me this look like I was stupid and said, I'm not moving it anywhere, I want to keep it there. I mentioned to him that it's difficult for me to sit with my legs crossed like that, and he responded that I'm going to have to deal with it. Yeah, that sort of blatant disregard for someone else killed off a slowly dying relationship.